All right. Hi, guys. Um, I think we'll wait um, like two minutes, see if more people show up and we'll get started. Okay, I think we'll get started now. Um, so welcome back to the Python programming class. This is week five. Thank you guys for staying with us for this long. Okay, so it's for today, we're gonna first, we're gonna go over the homework and then we're gonna do like a short review from last class. And then we're gonna go over classes, objects and inheritance. Um, this is pretty important, especially for the project that you guys are going to start next week. Um, and then we'll do a short demo. And again, the homework for this week, since there's no practice problems, um, the homework is going to be mandatory. Okay, so we'll go over homework answers. I'll get that set up. And while I'm doing that, also pull up your homework as well. Let me share a screen. Okay. Okay, so this was your homework from last week. Um, you guys should have done it. Um, yeah, okay, so the first one, number one, we're gonna go over that one. So it says to concatenate these two lists index wise. So we have list one is, okay, I'll type it out. M and A, I, B, and list two. Y, M, E. Okay, so um, can anybody like just, you could either shout it out or put in the chat. How do you guys think we can concatenate these lists? Yeah, Arithic. Um, so we can make a function called def concat list by index. And then in brackets, we could put list one comma list two, and then colon. Like this. Yes, uh, and colon, and then we can say uh, with an indent list underscore size equals length of in brackets list one. Okay. After that, we can say for index in range, and then within parentheses list underscore size. Mm -hmm. And then print uh, in brackets list one in rectangular brackets index plus list two in rectangular brackets index close uh, brackets. Like that? Yeah. And then okay. And then yeah. we can say concat list by index list one list two again. List one, list two. Okay, so let's run this. Okay, so it works. So I like how you used um, a function. That's actually pretty smart because if you want to concat multiple lists um, at a time, then a function would be easier to do that, right? But there's actually a much simpler way to do this um, since we're 
if you think about it, we're right now we're only using two um, lists. We're not using multiple. So a simpler way is we can say for i in list one, which was the, it's kind of it's the same thing as index range list size, right? So yeah. for i in list one, for j in list two. So it's basically saying for each index in list one and for each index in list two, zip i comma j. So do you guys remember what the zip function did? Um, no. No? OK, yeah. So the zip method, um, actually, it concatenates both the list for you using the index. So that's why we have i and j, because right now that's our index for each list. So then we can print. Uh, let's do this. OK, so let's say we have a list called list three. We'll, that could be empty list. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is wrong. Let's see if that works. Oh. Let's just say print. We don't need another list. What? That's weird. Okay, actually, scratch that. Don't do it this way. <laughs> I'll teach you guys another way. So instead of doing that, we'll define a new list and let's and this is basically um you're basically in this method, you're doing a for loop in one line. So you're gonna say i plus j like we did before, for i and j in zip, plus one, plus two. So now it should work, and list three. So now if we print list three, it should show up, yeah. So this is actually how it was, how we're supposed to like print it out. So now um, we have one list and each item is basically like squished together into one list. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes, that makes sense. Awesome. Okay, number two. Given a nested list extended by adding the sublist H I J. That's your expected output. Okay. So Let's have list one is equal to, I'll just copy basis. Okay. And we have a sub list and that is H I J. So what's, how do we do this? How do we make it so that the, we can extend the nested list um, and have that sub list also included? Yeah, Rithik? Um, so we have the list. Uh, after uh, printing sublist and list one, we can say print in brackets list one, and then in rectangular brackets, we can put in two, and then in another pair of rectangular brackets, we can put in one. And then okay. uh, after that, mm -hmm. we can do print uh, same thing, brackets, list one, brackets, uh, rectangular brackets, two, rectangular brackets, one. And then add, uh, and then add, rect uh, af after one, add rectangular brackets, two. Two. Okay. So what? Uh, after that, we can say for item in sub list. list one, rectangular brackets two, rectangular brackets one, rectangular brackets two, mm -hmm. dot append in bracket item. Item. 
And then after that, we can say print list one. Print list one. Okay, let's see. Oh no, don't be so. Oh. Let's see. Okay. So this was list two one. This was list two one two. And then let's see. Yeah, so you got it correct. Good job. Um, so there's actually a second way to do this. The instead of using the append method, we'd use the extend method. So we wouldn't have to need this for loop right here, right? So what we can do is we can just say list list one two one two dot extend sublist and then if we just print list one it should work yeah so you see here it's the exact same thing so two different methods one of them is shorter than the other right and also remember when you have a list with multiple lists inside, you have to make sure to use these brackets consecutively for each index of the list. Okay, number three, last one. Write a program which will find all such numbers which are divisible by seven, but are not a multiple, multiple of five between 2003 and 3200, both included. The numbers obtained should be printed in a comma separated sequence on a single line. Consider using range, hashtag begin, hashtag end method. Okay, so let's define an empty list first. Okay, so how would we do this? Yeah, right there. Um, so what we can do is new equal to and then rectangular brackets. Okay, so. After yeah. that, we can say for item in range within brackets 2000, 3201. Yeah. And then after that, if item remainder seven is equal to zero. Mm hmm. And then um, we can uh, write another line. If not, item remainder five equal to zero. Okay, so if you do not like this, or did you do it not equal to? Um, just like normal not. Okay, so I like this. One, five, not equal to? Uh, no, equal to. Equal to, and then not? Yeah. Okay. New dot append, and then within brackets item. And then after that, we can make a new line and just say mm -hmm. print, and then new. New. Okay, so let's print stop. Yeah. Um, so there's actually a problem with this if statement. Um, you do this, I think you do it in Java. You do um, not before, but when you're using Python, you, do, you can just say not equal to. So it just means the same thing. Um, yeah, this is item, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see what is it I do. Okay, yeah, also, um, instead of doing a nested loop, nested loop, it, it works the same way, but you can basically just take this and you can do and, and you can just put it there. And it just means the same thing. So let's run this. Yeah, so this is correct actually, because um, it's in an array, which that's fine. But if you want it to be so that it prints out each value without the array brackets separated by a comma, 
you would actually use um, the join method. So you would do that by having a character of comma, and then you'd say dot join. And then you'd say list, or in this case, it's new. You print that out. Oh, what happened? Sequence M0. It's weird. Oh, OK. Also, um, when we're, if we want to use the join method, we actually have to turn each item in the list into a string. So right now, that's what it's saying. It found an int. Um, so we'd have to turn this into a string. So we just add this string thing. Change the data type to a string and then let's see if it works. Yeah. So now we just printed out each item separated by a comma. Good job. Okay. Also, I'd like to yeah. point out that I didn't write if item in that way, if not item. Mm -hmm. I just wrote if in words, not in words, item remainder five equal to zero colon. And it worked for me on PyCharm. It worked for you? OK, maybe it was my fault then. Okay. OK, let's move on. Somebody in the chat. OK, um, Somia, I will. Um, can you send me an email? I will like send you all the stuff. I'll send you, that's my email. So you can just send me an email and then I'll, I'll forward everything to you. Okay. Let's see, let's keep going. All right, so we finished homework. Okay, so this is just review from last class. So we did lists and basically remember, um, lists can store multiple values and you use the square brackets and list items are always ordered changeable or mutable and they allow dupl duplicate values. Um, so when we say they're order that basically means that they have a defined order that you cannot change. Um, and by mutable that means that we can um, change the items in the list. So when we um, do like a list and then we have a dot and then a function, it changes the actual original list, unlike a string. Yeah, okay. And then also um, accessing items in a list, um, you'd index it the same way as you would index a string. And if you wanna check if an item exists um, in a list, you use the in keyword. And this is an example of slicing, okay. Um, useful methods for lists, um, we have the insert method, it inserts a new list item without replacing any of the existing values. Um, append is to add an item to the end of the list. Extend is to append elements from another list into the current list. Um, and we have remove and pop. And remove is basically um, you have the specified item as the argument, and it removes it from the list. And pop is where you have the index of that specific item and you remove that from the list. Um, yeah, and then we have sort, and that sorts the list alphabetically, um, ascending or by default. And um, you want to be careful when you have uppercase and lowercase letters. Um, let's say you have like a list of strings and you have uppercase and lowercase. It may do like different things that you would expect it to do. So be careful. Um, and again, slicing is an operation that extracts a subsequence and like. Over here, this is an example of slicing. So you would, you have um, the start index, which is two, and the end index, which is seven minus one, six. And then it would give you the substring of that. Okay. And then lastly, we did tuples. And tuples, they store multiple values just like a string, but you use um, round brackets. And the thing about tuples is that they're ordered, but they're unchangeable. So you cannot change them um, at all. Um, the one way that you can change them is if you convert it to a list um, to change its elements, and then you can convert it back to a tuple. Um, you're allowed to extract, extract the values into variables, and that's called unpacking. And um, if you want, um, let's say, a list um, from the tuple, then you can use an asterisk, and, um, and you can add that to the variable name, and then it'll assign it to a list, um, like a sub list inside 
people. Okay, so today we're going to start off with classes. So um, as we said before in the beginning of the class, and actually week one, Python is an object-oriented programming language. And we didn't really go that much in depth into what object-oriented means. Um, so basically it means that almost everything in Python is an object that has both properties and methods. And so a class is a blueprint for creating those objects, um, or you could call it an object constructor. And if you wanna create a class, you use the keyword class. And this is an example. So we have a class named my class with a property of X. And you can use that class um, to create an object P1. So right now our object right now is P1 and we use the class my class. Um, there's also a note, classes and objects in their simplest form are not really useful in real life applications like class my life x is equal to five. That's not, or sorry, class my class x is equal to five. That's not necessarily useful. You usually have functions inside of a class in different properties. Um, okay, yeah. So another thing about classes is you have the built-in init function and um, all, cl all classes have a function called init and it's always executed when the class is initiated. Um, you use the init function to assign values to object properties or other operations that are necessary to do when the object is being created. So I'll like explain this um, in an example later on. Um, an init function um, usually initialize parameters with the values passed as arguments to it. And the parameters are accessed in other methods of the class, um, also with object reference. Um, another note, the init function is called automatically every time the class is being used to create a new object. Okay, so this is an example. So right now we have a class called laptop and we have our init function, which is our default function. And we have self, name, processor, HDD, RAM, cost, whatever. So basically right now we're creating a bunch of properties by saying self.name is equal to name. So here, um, if you see here, we have the object is created using these parameters and we have laptop.name. So it goes back and it sees what the name is and it returns it back to self.name, if that makes sense. And then we also have dot processor, same thing. It returns it back. Um, we have a function, another function inside class laptop called details. And this is how you would call um, that function. And the function doesn't have any parameters. It only has self. And I'll like explain what self is um, later on as well. Okay, do you guys have any questions about this example? No? Yeah, do you have a question? Um, I'm, I'm working on this code in Replit class laptop uh, DEF init self name that thing. Um, I finished HDD RAM cost and then I'm adding a colon in Replit and then it says um, like, um, it, colon is invalid syntax. Adding the colon is an invalid syntax, like how it is in the example. Where where did you add the colon? Um, after self name processor HDD RAM cost, I had I, I added the colon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Try to fill. Just ignore it for now, and then fill in like the self dot name, like all the methods, and then see if it works. Because I think right now it thinks that it's an empty function. OK. OK, I'm going to move on. You can take a screenshot of this if you're not done yet. All right. Um, OK, so now, yes, we'll go over objects. Yeah. So. Um, Objects can also contain methods. So methods and objects are basically um, functions that belong to the object. 
like so for example class person so you have these specific um, parameters in the init in the init function and then you have um then you and then you have my function my func as another function under class person and then at the end you insert a function that could that would print a greeting and execute on the p1 object so what essentially this is doing is um p1 is uh, essentially an object that is assigned to um that equals a class person but with parameters so this these parameters um correlate with the ones in the function in it and then after p1 is assigned then you'd say p1 my func and this would essentially run take whatever was in it will run the init function first first it'll go under class person run the init function and then it will go to and it will use p1 as an object to run the my func function um, and so there's also a note that the self parameter is a reference to the current instance of a class and it is used to access variables that belong to the class. Um, so essentially what that means is um, a self parameter is used to um, like, it doesn't have to be named self, but it like essentially is a first parameter and it is used to access the variables that come after it. Like for example, name and age that is used in class person. So self would just say like, it would access name and age. And then object properties, you can um, modify properties of an object by like assigning them to different values. And you can also delete properties by using the um, del keyword. And the pass statement is like, you can use it when, um, if you don't, if you have a class definition without um, content, but um, you don't want, since you don't want the class definition to be empty, you would use the pass statement to avoid getting an error. Rithik, do you have a question? No, okay. Okay, so next we're gonna go over inheritance. Um, so basically inheritance allows us to define a class that inherits all methods and properties from another class. Um, and this is when we have parent and child classes. So a parent class is a class that you're inheriting from and any class can be a parent class. Um, so the syntax is, same, is the same when you're creating um, any other class. Um, and there's a difference in a child class. So a child class is the class that inherits from the parent, parent class. And so to create that class, um, you have to send the parent class as a parameter when you create the child class. So like an example is um, here we have class person, which right now is our parent class, and we have student, which is our child class. So in order to inherit um, from the parent class, you'd have to put person in the parentheses. Um, and when you add the init function to the child class, it no longer inherits the parents in it in it function. So that basically means that it's overriding that inheritance. So you can do that for any of the functions inside um, a parent class if you want to override it. Um, okay, yeah. So Python also has a super function um, that will make the child class inherit all the methods and properties from its parent. Um, same thing here. We have a class student and then person will be the um, parent class. And we have the overrided um, init function. And we have self f name l name, um, which is by first name, last name. And then we have the super function. And then it's basically saying inher inherit um, all the methods and properties from the init function of the person class. That makes sense. OK. And you, if you add a method um, in the child class with the same name as the function of the parent class, the inheritance of the parent method will be overridden again. So yeah. All right, so we're going to do a quick demo um, and try to participate when I ask questions, not like last time. OK, I'll get that open in a second.
Okay, let me just get this open. Okay, so let's start off by creating a class named person. Use the init init. Oh my god. Function. To assign values for name and age. So this was the, an example that we showed you guys. What? Yeah. All right. So how do we start off by creating the class? How do we define the class? Any ideas? Yeah, Rithik? Use the class function. Yeah, so it's it's not actually not called a function, it's called a keyword. So you'd use class the class keyword and you'd say class person. So that's correct. Okay. And so we want to create a class name person, use the init function to assign values for name and age. So how do we use the init function? Anybody? It's a function, right? So remember, we're defining it. So how do we define that function? Yeah, I think. Use the keyword DEF. Yes, OK. So DEF in it. And what will we put inside the parentheses? Um, we put um uh, self dot h self dot age age like that yeah is that it um yeah okay. So you're actually really close. You're on the right track. So when we're defining an init function, we don't want to do self.age yet. We actually start off with self as one of the parameters, and then we do name and age. Because remember, we want to assign, oh, I didn't even write it. OK, that was my fault. Name and age. So we do self, comma, name, comma, age. So those are our three parameters. And then we would do self.name is equal to name. So we're assigning that um, method to the name parameter, if that makes sense. Okay, and then we do the same thing for age. Or oh, sorry, it's not a method, it's a property. Yeah, okay. So we created a class and we use the init function we assign the values for name and age. Okay. So let's create a test case. So let's make an object. So let's call the object P1. So how do we make an object? Have an object be like a person called John with an age of 36. How do we do that? Yeah, Rithik. We can put in um person mm -hmm. and then um we can uh put in the person's name and age in there yeah so REPL is nice and they already tell you what you have to do so you would do person so from the class person we have the two um parameters john 36 which is name and age okay so how would we print out the name specifically from that object and the age specifically from that object on two different lines. So let's have two different print statements. So one for the name and one for the age. So right now we created an object. So how do we get the name and the age from, the, from that object?
Yeah. Brother, do you have an answer? Rithik, <laughs> do you have an answer? No? OK. <laughs> Sorry. It's OK. Anyone else have an answer? Um, I think it's P1. Just P1? Yeah. Um. OK, so you got the first part correct. Right? We need to add something on if we only want to um, print out one property. So right now we have two properties, right? Self.name and self.age. So how will we print out each property? Um, dot name and dot age. Yeah, that's right. So if we do dot name and dot age with the object, it would print out John 36. Good job. Awesome. OK. So let's keep going. So let's add another function and let's call it print name. And we won't have any parameters for that. So whenever you don't have any parameters and you want to use the properties from the init function, you'd use the self keyword, remember. Okay, and then let's just say we want to print out the uh, let's do it like this name and then self dot age. Okay. So we have a function right now that prints out the name of the age. So how would we call that function? So we don't need a print statement because right now this function is doing that for us. So all we have to do is call it. So how would we do that? We have the object P1. Does anybody remember? Okay, that's fine. So we have the object P1 and we want to print it out, but we already have a function inside of the class that we can use. So basically what we would do is we would do p1 dot print name and that prints it out. Yeah. Does that make sense? Hopefully, okay. Let's see. Okay, let's change this. Let's make it first name, last name. So let's just say first name, last name. Okay, and then we'll keep this as first name, last name. All right, so let's create a child class. So let's, okay, so if we want to Let's say we want to create a child class called student and you want to inherit from person. How would we define the class? Does anybody know? So we have child class student. So how we would do that is we would basically say class stu student and then in parentheses person. So it's inheriting all of the methods and properties from person. Okay, so now we have a child class. So how do we override persons in it? in its function. How would we override that? What? That's so weird. OK. How do we override the person's init function? Because right now we're inheriting everything from person. 
But let's say we want to define a new init function. How do we do that? And let's say our init function, our new init function has first name, last name, and the year. Does anybody have any ideas? Remember when we want to override something, we just define it again. So how do we do that? Um, what if we write a new init function with um firstly uh for year? Yeah, that's correct actually. So instead of not writing it in the function at all, you would basically define a new init function inside of student, inside of the child class. So you'd say define init, and you'd say self, ethname, full name, and year. So right now it's overriding um, the init function from the person class. So then, let's see, how can we inherit all the properties from the parent class? So right now we overrided the init definition, the function. How can we now inherit all the properties of a parent class? Do you guys remember how to do that? There's a specific function that we have to use. Okay, I'll give you the first part. So the function is super. We have to do dot and then we have to put something else and REPL don't give you guys any hints. <laughs> so we have super, which is a function that we use to inherit the properties from the parent class. And then what would we put next? Because we need to tell the computer, I want to inherit these properties from this function. How do we do that? Any ideas? The other hand, we want to inherit all the properties from the parent class, specifically the init functions properties. What do we put after the period? No one. Okay. <laughs> We would do super and then we do dot and then we just do init f name l name. Does that make sense? Because we're inheriting from this function. So we just say, I want to inherit from that function. Yeah. Okay. Let's just add another um, property for the parent class or for the child class. So another property, since right now we have year as an extra parameter, we can um, assign that to graduation year. So let's define another function just for fun. Print welcome. So here, let's see. Uh, okay, so right here and right here, we want to print out the name, the last name, and then we want to print out the graduation year. So how would we do that? Right now, our default function 
has F name, L name, and year. And we inherited the properties from the init function of the parent class. So we inherited these properties. And then we added the graduation year property. So if we want to create another function that says welcome, first name, last name, graduation year, it's the class of graduation year, how would we write that? Come on, you guys. Um, I'll give you the first part. Okay, we have to say self dot, and then we have to say something else. For let's just say for like the first name. What would you write? Self dot what? Um, I think it's self dot first name mm -hmm. or f name. It's first name. Because if you remember, the parameter is like a temporary value, a temporary variable for that value. So we're assigning the property first name to that value. Yeah. So we, you have the first part correct. Self dot first name. What's the next part for the last name? Um, it's self dot last name and oh, also name. dot last year after to the class of. So how would I write that? Um. Self dot la, um, graduation year. Yes, so that's correct. Graduation year. And let's just do a test case. So we'll have another. We'll just do a student name John. Student John Smith. His graduation year is 1996. And so if you guys remember from before, if we want to use this function, we would do p1.welcome. And that, since it's already printing something out, we don't need to worry about the print statement. But yeah, welcome John Smith, it's the cast of 1996. Good, everybody understand. I think we're gonna end class a little early today. Awesome, okay. I'll stop sharing and then we'll go back to the slides. Okay, yeah. So that was actually the end. Um, the homework again is mandatory at this link. Um, you guys can start working on it right now until four. And if you guys have any questions, just unmute or ask us in the chat. Yeah. So don't leave yet. Stay until four and just start the homework. Awesome. And we are going to be starting our projects next week. So I would do the homework for this week. Um, can you post the link in the chat, please, so that I can access it? Yes, I will do that. Oh, so I'll send you the link. Hold on. So write it all out. Okay, there. Um, I need access to the doc. Oh, really? Oh, let me change that. I don't Hold think on. it's changed to everyone with link and access. Yeah, I'll change that right now. Okay, try it now. It works, thank you. Yep.
Okay. Um, it is three fifty five. Um, so I'll actually I'll go over the first problem because I think everybody should have been able to do the first problem. Um, yeah, I'll get that set up. Uh, let's see. Okay, so um, the first problem was create a vehicle class with max speed and mileage instance attributes. So right now we're just creating a class with these attributes as the default attributes, right? So we'd start off by saying class vehicle, do colon. We say definition of the init function is self with the parameter self max speed and mileage All right and so we can't just leave it there we have to create the properties if you remember so we do self dot max speed is equal to max speed and self dot mileage Is equal to mileage. Does that make sense? And we could do some like test cases so like model X equal to 240, 18. Print model X dot max speed model X dot mileage. So remember, this is the object, and then we have these properties that we want to um, print out. Okay, so that is the end of today's class. Thank you guys for coming, and see you guys next week. Excuse me? Yeah. Could you put the presentation back up because yeah. I wasn't able to finish it, so I want to take a screenshot. Do you remember which slide? Um, no, I mean of the like replic uh Volvo code. Oh, the vehicle. The bus code. The bus code, yeah. The... We just did the first one, so the first problem. You're talking about this one, right? Pathic? Is this the one that you were talking about? Yeah, um, I got the screenshot. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, no problem. Bye.
Okay, so I think the instructor is not going to be here today. So, yeah, there's no class today. <laughs>